So you're familiar with probiotics and maybe you have a probiotic with a prebiotic, but how about something like this that has a postbiotic? Do you know the difference between all these different terms and why they're good for you? If not, stay tuned, so let me explain. And what's up everybody, CW here from Considerate Health, and today we are defining all things biotic, prebiotics, probiotics, symbiotics, and postbiotics, so that you can understand the difference between all these terms. Now, to get official, we're actually gonna borrow these definitions from the International Scientific Association of Probiotics and Prebiotics, also known as ISAP, a global organization of experts on all these subjects that are biotics related. All right, let's warm up nice and easy. Probiotics, very familiar term, right? Probiotics by definition are live microorganisms when administered in adequate amounts confers a health benefit on the host. <sighs> yeah, why couldn't they just say beneficial bacteria that's good for your gut, right? Hold on there, you missed a lot in that definition. Let's go back and dig deeper. Now first, microorganisms. While it's true that most probiotics are basically just beneficial bacteria, there are actually good yeasts out there like Saccharomyces boulardii that are considered probiotics as well. Next term, administered. Why couldn't they just say swallow, right? Well, actually, there are an increasing number of skin creams that have probiotics in them that are used to treat acne and eczema and other conditions. The verdict is still out on how effective they are, but that is a reality. There's also probiotics that are administered vaginally and some that are administered rectally. Must be a pain in the, Never mind. Now the term adequate amounts. Question, how many probiotics do I actually have to swallow or apply to get benefit and for it to be considered a probiotic? The answer is, it depends on the strain of probiotic. Now this number can vary from the millions to the billions depending on which strain of bacteria we're talking about. Now manufacturers know this, that bacteria and yeast will decline over time, so they often overshoot the number that they place in the capsules so that there will be at least the minimum number of viable cultures by the sell by date or the best by date. Now the term health benefit. Listen, if there's no demonstrable health benefit, it can't be considered a probiotic, plain and simple. There may be products over the counter that contain bacteria, but if it hasn't been shown to be beneficial, it can't be considered a probiotic. That's it. Now the last one is on the host. Listen, probiotics aren't just for humans. They can be for your pets too, your dogs, your cats, for Skip and Fido and Max. But guess what? The probiotics that are good for them may not be a probiotic for you because there's host specific and vice versa. Now, so far so good? Awesome, let's move on to prebiotics. Prebiotics by definition are a substrate that is selectively utilized by host microorganisms that confers a health benefit. Now, couldn't they just say prebiotics are food for the probiotics? That's kind of what they are, right? Yes, but what is that food? Let's talk about that. Now many people know prebiotics as certain types of fibers that we humans cannot break down, but bacteria can. Hence that part of the definition, selectively utilized by host microorganisms. So if you see terms like inulin, chicory root, fructo oligosaccharides, galacto oligosaccharides on a food label, those are prebiotic fibers. Now, a lot of foods contain prebiotics, including artichoke, asparagus, dandelion greens, and some more foods that I've posted here. After the revision of the definition of prebiotics in December 2016, there may be other compounds now besides fibers that are considered prebiotics. This includes certain things like flavonoids in foods and even certain types of fat. So the definition of what people think of as prebiotics may be actually expanding. Now one thing of remarkable about prebiotics is that they only feed certain good strains of bacteria like bifidobacteria and lactobacillus and not feed other strains like E. coli or Clostridium. So that's why they are selective and they only feed the good stuff. So what happens if we just put the bugs and the bug food together? Well, we get symbiotics. Symbiotics are, by definition, a mixture comprising of live microorganisms and substrates selectively utilized by host microorganisms that confers a health benefit. Basically, prebiotic plus probiotic equals symbiotic. Here's a quiz question though. Do the prebiotics in the capsules feed the probiotics in the same capsule or does it feed the gut bacteria? 
Good question. The answer is, it could be either. Now, for those that are interested, I've included a link below so you can read more on the difference between complementary and synergistic symbiotics. And last but not least, we come to postbiotics. What in the world is that? It sounds like something that comes after probiotics, right? Well, kind of. Postbiotics, which in the scientific literature is also referred to sometimes as metabiotics or parabiotics, are by definition a preparation of inanimate microorganisms and or their components that confers a health benefit on the host. Inanimate microorganisms? You mean like dead probiotics? Well, yeah, and actually more than that, not just dead probiotics, but even parts of dead probiotics, parts of dead bacteria that can be beneficial for health. Now you may be wondering, wait, I thought probiotics have to be alive to actually have a health benefit. Well, guess what? Surprise, no, it doesn't. There are certain studies showing that certain bacteria, even when they are dead, even when they are lysed, basically broken apart, can have benefits on the host. Hmm, so maybe those expired probiotics aren't completely useless after all. Now, if you think about this concept, it shouldn't be all that surprising because it's kind of similar to how some of our vaccines work. They utilize inactivated uh, viruses or bacteria or certain parts of them to generate a strong immune response. Now, for those of you that are wondering, it is explicitly stated that vaccines cannot be classified as postbiotics. And just to round out the discussion on postbiotics, just like any living creature, bacteria can have byproducts. What goes in must come out. And what comes out of bacteria includes a lot of beneficial things, including beneficial fats like short chain fatty acids, certain carbs, certain fats, and certain vitamins that are beneficial for our health. Kind of weird, huh, that bacteria waste can be good for us. But hey, that's what postbiotics are. Now, more curious about postbiotics? Well, stay tuned for my next episode as I spend more time discussing that. So there you have it, definitions of all things biotics. And for those that want a quick summary, here it is. Probiotics, the microbes that are good for us. Prebiotics, the food for the microbes that are good for us. Symbiotics, prebiotics plus probiotics. And lastly, postbiotics, the byproducts of the microbes that are good for us. Now, if you like this video, please post something biotic in the comments below. See what I did there? Anyways, until the next episode, be well.